hello. Um, so it's Monday evening. Uh, it's about 6 o'clock. I'm trying to get this video done before Eric gets home um, in like a half an hour. So hopefully I'll be concise and won't have to like restart and everything. Um, so I had a doctor's appointment this afternoon with my Lyme doctor. Um, and we, <laughs> so I went into the appointment with my long list of stuff to talk about, all about, you know, getting ready, um, to get pregnant, and, um, like, we, we went through pretty much everything that I wanted to go through, but it was just kind of funny that, um, you know, I went in and sat down, and, you know, she asked me how I was doing, and I was like, oh, no, I'm doing okay, and, you know, the big thing right now is that Eric and I, um, want to start a family, and she was like, oh, like, now? <laughs> And I'm like, well, I mean, soon, like, we want to, you know, get going on this. And, um, so that was just kind of funny. And, um, she's been my doctor for, I started seeing her in 2004, so, like, eight years. Um, and, uh, there was, there was some time in there where I wasn't seeing her. But, basically, like, she knows me really well, and she's seen me through, um, a lot of stuff, um, and, uh, so, so it was just, it was just nice to, you know, have a doctor that I know really well, and I trust, um, and, uh, we have a good relationship and everything, so it was nice to be able to sit down and talk through all of this with her. Um, so, basically, um, she was kind of, I mean, she was glad that I had, was doing so much research on the medications and she actually relied on my information um, quite a bit about what class they're in and if there's you know issues and whatever um, and like it's kind of giving me the freedom to um, to decide which is right you know to decide what to be on and what not to be on um, so basically I have already taken myself I've already weaned myself off of one of my medications that I definitely needed to get off of because it's a class D medication. Um, and so basically there's five classes of medications as far as pregnancy goes. Um, there's A, B, C, D, and X. And A is like safe. There's, you know, there's been studies or whatever and it's deemed safe. B is pretty much safe. Um, like there really aren't issues with it. C is where it starts to get like, well, we're not sure because it relies on animal studies or um, kind of more anecdotal evidence. Um, and then D is not safe unless there's like a really strong reason to be on a medication. And X is you're just not supposed to be on it um, when you're pregnant. So, um, so I have one medication that I was on, um, Topamax, which is a class D medication. So I knew that I was going to need to get off of that, and I kind of wanted to get going on, you know, weaning down on things, because um, I'd like to get off of a lot of my stuff if I can. Um, so I had started, I basically weaned myself off of that over the last couple of weeks. Um, so that's good that I'm already off of that. And um, she said that I, I did, like, I weaned myself relatively fast. Um, but like I followed instructions that I, um, that I found <laughs> and, um, I wasn't on a huge dose. So like basically the weaning off process for Topamax is to make sure that you don't end up having seizures from it, um, by stopping it too fast because, um, even if you haven't had seizures in the past, it can cause seizures and, um, if you suddenly stop it. So, um, anyway, I feel like I'm getting off track. Um. So I had already stopped the Topamax, um, and there are, you know, I have a list of my other medications, and so we basically just went through the list, and um, there's two that are class Bs, so, like, I definitely can stay on those, and that's fine. Um, one of them is Zofran, which I don't know what I would do if I didn't have, if I couldn't have Zofran. Um, and then a lot of the other medications are just, like, there's not a lot of evidence. Some of them unless you're, you take really high doses are, are fine, um, from what I found. So, um, so basically we're not flat out stopping any of my other medications. Um, we're going to try to wean down on one of them. Um, and, you know, kind of 
take it from there. And um, as far as the supplements that I'm still on, they're all safe except for the artemisinin that I've been on. Um, she said basically you don't want to be taking herbs while you're pregnant. So, um, which I had already figured that the artemisinin wasn't going to be okay. And um, we're not really going to be actively treating my Lyme or co-infections. So um, I'm not really concerned about stopping the artemisinin. Um, so those are basically, and we talked about like since I'm off of the Topamax, and um, may have to come off of the other medication that I'm on to prevent headaches. Um, like I'd like to if I could, but we're not gonna go that far right now. Um, we were t we talked about other, and I can't take the migraine medication, Frova, that I've been taking. Um, so we talked about other things to take for headaches and stuff. Um, and basically, I the information that I had read, um, which is kind of the most widely accepted thing is that the only painkiller that you can really take is Tylenol, which if if you have a migraine, Tylenol is not going to cut it. Um, but my doctor said that um, taking Excedrin migraine would be okay. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to be taking it all the time, and you know it does have some caffeine in it, so it can, can cause rebound headaches. And um, like I have taken Excedrin migraine in the past for my headaches so um so I like I basically don't take anything if I don't have to but it's just nice to know that that would be an option and it would be pretty safe um so that's that so then um the next step is we're switching my antibiotics so I have been on doxycycline and clindamycin most recently, um, along with Malarone for Babesia. And basically, I'm coming off of all of those. Um, we're stopping all those, and we're not, like I said, we're not going to be actively treating my infections. We're just basically going to be doing what we need to do in order to make sure that I can, you know, have a healthy pregnancy and have a healthy baby. Um, so I'm going to be starting, and I'm going to be going on off of IV antibiotics and just onto orals. Um, so I'm going to be starting on Ceftin um, twice a day. And then once I actually get pregnant, um, then I'll also be starting on Mepron with that. But we figured um, that she started writing the prescription for Mepron and then she realized, you know, it doesn't really make sense for you to be taking it for the whole time that you're trying to get pregnant because um, you don't need to, and it could take a while. So, like, as long as, you know, within a few weeks of, of finding out that you are pregnant, you call and we get started on that, it's fine. So, so no yellow paint right now. We'll be waiting on that. Um, so that's, let me see if there's other stuff. And I asked her about prenatal vitamins, and she said not to worry about it right now because I'm already taking folic acid. Um, so we're not worrying about that. That'll probably be a good question for me to ask the midwives that I see, the, the midwife that I'll see next week. Um, oh, no, okay. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, I probably didn't in my last video. Um, so I have now made a, an appointment to have a preconception visit with one of the midwives at the birth center that we went and visited last week. So next Thursday I have that appointment um, and we'll have a chance to go over all my history and all of that stuff. So um, so that'll be good. Um, so I'll also ask about prenatal vitamins. Um, and my doctor basically said, you know, you don't really need to start them now. Um, and I'm already on, um, you know, a bunch of vitamins and stuff in my IV every day. And there's some stuff that I just take normally anyway. So I don't really need to start that right now. The only thing that I'm probably going to need to start taking at some point, I would guess, is iron, which I have tried to restart taking and have just had a hard time with it. So um, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. Is there other stuff? I also asked about Bartonella treatment during pregnancy, and um, she basically said that <laughs> for, for me, 
as far as my case is concerned, I've been treated for it a lot and don't really have strong evidence that it's active, so it's probably not a real concern. Um, but there's also really no antibiotics that are safe for pregnancy that treat Bartonella. So, um, so yeah, so we just have to kind of go and hope that things are good um, as far as that goes. I've read some, I've, so I read one thing today that said um, that Bartonella is not as easily transmitted as Lyme. So I don't know if that's true. I read it one place. You know, it's not something that's necessarily been substantiated other places. Um, but there's not a whole lot of information about this to start with. So, you know, any little bit of information I can get, hopefully it's reliable and, you know. So, let's see. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there were a few things that I had on my list that I apparently forgot to ask about, but they're not really pregnancy related, so. Um, so yeah, so that's the update on things. Um, I'll be staying on my um, I'll be staying on my IV stuff, um, the fluids and amino acids and everything, um, and for the most part, we're leaving my medications alone for now. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, hope I didn't forget anything uh, but I wanted to get the video made and up before too long um, and I mean I only got home like an hour ago so <laughs> obviously I got to it pretty quickly um, oh and I'm also actually she also ordered some tests um, some blood tests one um, is to test for my rubella uh, antibodies so because I couldn't remember if I had had more than one um, MMR shot uh, vaccination, which um, I I know that I had one when I was young, like when I was a baby or whatever, um, but I couldn't remember if I had had a second one. And rubella is one thing that you kind of want to be wary of um, if you're going to be getting pregnant because it can be really serious um, if you happen to get it when you're pregnant. So, um, so I can also ask my mom if I had a second shot, but, um, a second vaccination. Um, but I, I'll also have the, probably get, the, just get the antibody test because, um, I might as well. And, and that's one thing that the midwives did talk about doing, that they do that. And, um, you know, it's just kind of information I could choose to, if I didn't have the antibodies, I could choose to have the vaccination. Um, but then I would apparently have to wait six weeks before um, trying to get pregnant. Um, or what the midwives said, which I think more applies to if you find out you don't have the antibodies when you're already pregnant, is that you just are careful about who you're around and you're not, you try not to be around sick people and all that. Um, so, yeah, and the other tests were not really relevant to this, so, um, so that's it. That's <laughs> the short, you know, 14 minute video about the update from today. So I will continue to update as I find out more things and, um, as things progress along and, um, yeah, it's kind of a cool, exciting journey to be starting on and I'm glad that I'm able to share it with, um, with all of you guys. And I will, I hope you're all doing well and I will talk to you again soon.